Welcome back to the IndieWood Podcast once again. This is Season 4, Episode 3, and I'm sitting here with my current guest, uh, Allie Ray Traharn. Uh Allie Ray is an actor and a producer and a theater maker. Uh, I think that's what we've, <laughs> we've kind of settled on. She has had quite a journey from Utah to Los Angeles, where she found her way from advertising to uh, starring in the last two seasons of the show Atypical. Oh, I did not star in it. Well, you were, I was you were like a, a small star guest. of the, <laughs> yeah, well, how, what's the proper term then? Get recurring guest. Casted? 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 I guest starred. You guest starred. Guest starred. Yeah, guest starred yeah, in yeah. the, uh, <laughs> it was a recurring guest star in the show Atypical. Then moved to produce a play about a, uh, sorry, a play titled Detroit that was uh, a Pulitzer runner-up, you said? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then that got into the Hollywood uh, Fringe Theater Festival. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there's a lot more other things that we're going to talk about later that your life is kind of evolving into, which is awesome. But I think in this episode, we, we wanted to touch on the the foundational thing for both theater and film, which is screenwriting. And um, you've done a little bit of writing to kind of adapt the plays that you've done into some kind of a short, short form video content. I don't want to, not short form video content, short film content. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your experience with writing and, and do you like it? Because I know some people are like, oh, I love it. I want to write, but I can't. Or some people are like, I want to do it, but also can't. Or everything in between, you know. Or some people can, they just choose not to. Yeah. Where do you where do you find yourself in the spectrum of screenwriting? I suspect that I am, my main issue right now is just the imposter syndrome mm. of being like, I can't because I suspect that I I think I might be better at it than I than I think. I will say everybody has at least one screenplay in them. That's, that's a fact. Like, you wow! Can, I can't wait to see what mine is. You can sit down and be like, literally anybody, truck driver, uh, the CEO oh, of a I large company. That. You know, everybody can sit down and be like, I can write this movie, and they do, and it's great, and it might be something that you could make. But everybody's got one, two, maybe. Mm. That's that's uh, it's up for you to decide. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about? The act of writing, I, and and I guess how, when you wrote the, you wrote some scripts for the the those adaptations you made, right, from theater. To- I wrote one short script that was an adaptation from a play, mm-hmm. and I think like the the adaptation thing is really helpful, and I I do think that like I am sort of interested in like I do see myself sooner than writing an original sc- screenplay, I can see myself adapting like an older play that I really love into something that's just like very contemporary and like more personal to me. But I think I, I like that idea. Of of doing that, but also that could just be because like I'm terrified of putting out my own. <laughs> it's scary ideas, yeah. and it just feels way. I think I like the idea of having the tether, the handholds of like a mm. pl- of a play that <laughs> that exists. Like it just you know seems like I want that guidance or something. Mm. But I definitely have ambitions to write a screenplay. <laughs> As you should, as you should. In in the world uh, we live in now where I think independent film and independent theater is going to blow up or is blowing up already. Really? I I think so because the studios, I mean, this is kind of a segue after the screenwriting path, but uh, I think studios are going to contract in a way where they've spent all this money trying to make streaming work and now they have to make money with the streaming that they've tried to make work, if that makes any sense. And so now there's going to be a contraction where they're not going to spend $80 million in a series. You're going to make it a 10, maybe even five. Maybe there's going to be less shows, but you know, or, or less expensive shows, but maybe more of them. People just are now having to figure out how to make money. Sorry, studios are trying to figure out how to make money with the current format that they have, which before they were just burning money left and right to be first. Mm, sure. Um, yeah, that's times kind of, are changing. Yeah, that's kind of my observation at least. And maybe I'm wrong, but... Um, I hope yeah, so. I love that. I think that's like really optimistic. <laughs> you know? I have to like, be optimistic. I, I love it, I yeah. Know, I, know, I can't do anything else. Well, yeah. give us something to you know look forward to after the past few years. Exactly, just yeah. like... You know, I'm sort of like, well, it's all burning down anyway. Like, let's make our own stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I like the down. first match. And so. yeah, and then so then there's there's room to like do stuff that's fun and creative and original and like takes risk and you know lets more people in. Yeah, and you can make movies for under ten million, under five million that are successful, that then go on to you know make sure everyone gets paid. They're just maybe not going to be that big in scope. And uh, we'll see how things unfold. But I think the next five years are going to be really fun for independent film. Fun. Mm. 
That's my can't ticket. wait. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't yeah. happen in five years, I'm going to come. You're going to come and be like, "Hey, so you. five years ago, you said, uh, well, I'll get my, I'll get, I'll start training, just start in stretching, case. yeah, start doing Pilates." As an actor, though, you you use screenplays a lot. I do. I love yeah. reading. So as a as a writer, as someone who's written a screenplay, and as an as an actor who's worked with screenplays quite extensively how do you feel writing is different than acting yeah than like reading it off the page and transforming it into a character well with writing you've kind of done the like original devising of the idea right even though you get that from somewhere else but like you're the one who put it on you're the one who made like the playground the structure the jungle gym like for the actor to play in so it's like obviously very fundamental and i think the people you choose to like play with your words are also fundamental but I think both of them require building and devising and creativity and imagination, but it's like the writing has to be there first. Of course, there's always improv and like other forms of performance and that don't necessarily require a script, but as far as scripted work goes, it seems to be like the foundational build of everything. Yeah. I like to think of it as more of a like exploration of, I don't say trauma, but experience, you know? And yeah. then as you kind of craft it, it becomes more foundational. I, I think we use entertainment vastly differently from you know the, the person next to us like my partner he likes to watch things that are sad and realistic i hate that mm -hmm. because i think life is kind of sad and realistic so i like to be more escapist i like to watch you know sci-fi and things that are fancy. Yeah, yeah you seem to like genre forward mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, something that's material an escape i'm an escapist when it comes to that sort of thing and so that's the stuff that that's i write great. yeah yeah since you like like to write more escapist things mm -hmm. things that are more maybe high you know, into high like concept. yeah, high concept. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. your writing is like more aspirational, more escapist. escapist. Yeah. So does that mean like when you're writing, is like the casting you have in mind more aspirational and escapist, or do you kind of ground it in like the people that are immediately around you? You know, it's weird to think about like who I want to be in the film when I'm writing it, because sometimes it feels aspirational, sometimes it feels realistic, depending on who you who you're working with. Like, am I writing it just for me? And then down the road, maybe I'll send it to a producer, or am I actively working with a producer? You know, and, and I had a project a while ago where I wrote uh, my own version of a superhero drama, I guess would be the right word, thriller. And it was about a mother who was going to go after the world's only superhero because he killed her daughter. And it's about the mother. And, you know, when I sat down with a production company, like, who do you see in this? Like, here's a list of actors. And, you know, I think part of it was also buttering me up a little bit, but it was exciting. And they were like, oh, what about, like, you know, this A-list actress or this A-list actress? I'm like, no, like, I know they're hot right now, but it doesn't fit. And I was like, how about Maria Bello? And they're like, oh, really? Mm -hmm. Like, why? And I'm like, can she carry a film like this? And I'm like, yeah, because this character feels so much like her, you know, because I saw her in, um, I believe the show was called In Plain Sight. And I think as I was writing the movie, I think I had her character in the back of my mind and like that visual aspect because I was like, oh, she's a cop in the in the movie, in my movie, and she kind of leaves the forest and goes cool. vigilante. Mm -hmm. And I think it just depends on the scenario, but whatever gets you to write a, a layered character yeah that's i think would do whatever you want to do i yeah i feel like maybe the through line is like it's about specificity mm -hmm. instead of you know like i think if you ground it yeah in specificity it could be a range of people yeah from the most like recognizable household name mm -hmm. to your neighbor who's not an, even an no. actor and you're like just that yeah. person it's about character yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i think for me like when casting falls like when i don't when it doesn't hit for me is when for me it doesn't feel specific mm -hmm. and like it's not rooted in like the character it seems to be rooted in a different choice that's like not a creative choice that's about the script yeah and I think when you write characters, a lot of the magic happens in their character relationships with, with other characters in the script. But also, I think a really important thing is their first introduction. And this was a whole big thing a couple of years ago. I don't know if it's still happening, but people would go on Twitter and be like, here's uh, a woman, uh, a female character being introduced and it's like hot but doesn't know it you know what i mean like oh yeah those, like, like the breakdowns we, yeah awful stereotypes oh, but those yeah. aren't just breakdowns those are like in the script sometimes sure yeah and it leads to very one-dimensional characters who are throwaways who are like you know the the fire for the male character to kind of like move forward you know? yep I get auditions yeah. for that a lot, even today. Mm. Not as much as I okay. used to. That's good. It's changing. A Not bit. as much as I used to, yeah. but I will say, like some of the biggest, the ones that have been the most like Egregious. offensive, yeah, yeah mm. have been uh, indie. 
films. Yeah, it's because there is, as much as this is an indie film podcast, I have to be honest that like in the indie film world, there's a lot of, misogyny. there are a lot of bad, that yes. Well, I mean, I think that there's misogyny just everywhere, Perfect. but I think it's, there's just a lot of bad takes like a bad opinion <laughs> like a bad version of something yeah. of a trope and they're like yeah no it's this character for this on the 90s you know i watched a show um a while ago i'm not going to name it because i enjoyed it at one point and like i watched it again and i'm like oh my god how did this make it on the mm-hmm. air mm-hmm. you know it's like a college show but like you know frat guys and i was like this is bad Mm. I was like embarrassed, mm-hmm. alone sitting in my room. Like, oh, <laughs> why did like I like this? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my um, God. But yeah, the I think a good character always stems from the specificity of not only their intention for the story, mm-hmm. but their their the details of, that make them them in the yes. story. So, like, I, I wrote this short a while ago, and it was um, about scientists, and they're they're your physicist. You know, and and for for me, when I introduced the character who was a supporting character, and she was a female female uh, character, it wasn't about like their visual or how they are as a woman, but how they are as a scientist. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that also kind of because you can work with that. Yes. Well, and I think characters. Yes. Characters who have autonomy Mm -hmm. are so much more interesting. And for some reason, and I do think it has gotten so much better, at least in my experience, you know, I've seen a difference except, which even makes, you know, the occasional audition that comes through of an indie film that is so incredibly egregious. It makes it even more disturbing to me because I'm just like, how, why, Mm -hmm. where did you come from? (laughs) Um, But uh, I, I think like, yeah, a character that's autonomous and that is making decisions or has reasoning behind what they're doing. And they're not just like a prop that's being thrown around to, you know, yeah. emphasize like the male, the male protagonist yeah. mm-hmm. journey. Yeah. I mean, like, this is really specific, mm-hmm. but like the amount of like unnamed sex workers yeah. that I've auditioned for and that I know women who've auditioned for and that people audition for in general to me, it's like, why wouldn't you give that person a name? Like they have, I, I had an audition for a sex worker for a big indie film with a big writer and the audition pages were maybe like, I think it was like eight to 10 pages of auditions That's and insane. she didn't have a name. And it That's was just insane. like, it was like prostitute number one or something, which also it's like, stop using the word prostitute yeah. and like give them a name because it's a person yeah. and also stop using sex workers as like props who don't know where they are, don't know what they're doing, don't know why they're doing it. Just want, you know, are are, are just like these malleable, like, like um, just props. Yeah. It's just yeah. so, I'm just so tired of it. It's yeah, name your sex worker characters. There's also been a regression. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. With Because in the 90s, I, uh, well, maybe, the, I don't know, when when was Independence Day? Oh, the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not Independence Day, the... Uh, the July 4th. Yeah. Well, I feel like it was late 90s, right? It was, it was, it was but it, 96, there we go. In that movie, the, um, the Will Smith's wife was a stripper. And, cool. And, like, throughout the movie, she became this badass that, like, broke down trucks like not broke, broke like broken into trucks to save people from like you know carnage and like you know while having a kid on her shoulder and like a, a, saving a dog and then saves you know the 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 first lady and I'm like cool like she's cool. more than just a stripper you know yeah, yeah the movie totally mm-hmm. I feel like something with indie film in particular people seem to love like the sex worker trope mm-hmm. and they seem I think it just seems to be like a really convenient thing yeah. for situations like to happen and so they often like. Yeah, they're just that. They're just a trope or like a prop. And I'm like, yeah, like write in sex workers, but like give them like a voice Mm -hmm. and give your actor a voice and give your actor like intelligent things to say. Like it is so offensive to send that material to hundreds of women and ask them to audition for your script. And it just blows my mind that people are still writing roles like that for women and just sending it out into the ether. It, It blows my mind and... I don't know. Just I think we 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 deserve more actors. Just deserve better treatment. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And and I think in the end, you know, apart from that being you know, misogynistic and and just bad writing in general, it's no, yeah, it's bad writing. I think I think that that's it. Uh, my my biggest takeaway. I have a couple of takeaways from from grad school. But one of my biggest takeaways is every character you write, no matter how small, no matter how big, has to be a reflection of your main character. 
they can't be a prop that like you know changes the the direction of your character they have to be a mirror but in order for them to be a mirror they have to be fully fleshed out mm-hmm. you know so even if you write a sex worker why is that sex worker you know important to this main character yeah how are they either validating their uh, original theme or their original kind of take on life or how are they changing it how are mm-hmm. they fighting against it and mm-hmm. um yeah, what are they yeah. fighting for? Yeah. Because everyone is fighting for something. Exactly, even if they don't know it. But yeah. for some reason, the women always so often don't have anything going on. Like, we don't need anything. We're not, we don't want anything. This is bad writing. Yeah. But it's also, I think people just don't know how to write women if they're not women. Right. Yeah. Which also, I'm, I'm just like, I don't know what to tell I, them about that because I think you yeah. should just write a person. Yeah. Yeah. I, I said this on a, on a pod uh, earlier. I was like, because I, I write a lot of uh, uh, female characters and a lot of leads uh, in my movies are, are female characters. But it's me just kind of unpacking my relationship with my mom. You know, like, she's she's an amazing human being, you know, and, and, and she's done so much for me. But it's like, I've had to not unpack, but like, understand. And so I'm just always trying to understand her. And in that experience, I write characters Mm -hmm. you know uh that that are also reflections of myself and you know the 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 superhero thing was just about my mom like i'm like i put myself in her shoes and 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 kind of thought about moments that happened in our life that were difficult and i was like how would she react in that moment and when you read something when you read a character description uh in a script what it was i don't want to say what's the worst and what's the best but like what do you want the most as an actor, mm. from that character description yeah. to give your sure. character life. I mean, besides a name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember what I was going to say, but I'll, I'll continue. Yeah. Besides a name. Okay. Ahead, yeah. Besides a name. I mean, I, just on a really basic level, even though this might seem obvious, but it, it still seems to be a thing. Like, not like it's leading with something that's not a physical description. Mm. Outside of like, I do think you should be specific with like race. Mm-hmm. ethnicity, gender, I think all of that is like really informative, obviously. It's not like, I'm mm-hmm. going to colorblind. Like, no, like that's important. So like for sure be specific, but sometimes a description is like, it's 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 like painting a, a physical picture of somebody that this writer, I think usually male, like wants to exist mm-hmm. instead of like describing like a human. It's a fantasy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so anytime something feels like it's kind of a fantastical, yeah, just like a fantasy of like a woman, mm-hmm. um, or it's just not specific, you know, like back when I lived in Utah, I was getting a lot more auditions that were just like mean girl, blonde cheerleader and it's like I don't get that stuff as much anymore simply because that's out of my like age range Mm -hmm. but also I just think like when I moved to LA it was so nice to there was just so so much more abundance of like characters that were just like I mean it blew my mind at first because I was so just unexposed to that um but just you know things that are like about what the character like wants I think that's a good thing to do in the in the character description. Every character, or like um, what their biggest flaw is. Yeah, every character is the hero of their own movie. Yeah, even the villain, even supporting actors. So they should have wants. They should be tested, and they should uh, have needs. Yeah, minimum. And just because they don't have a full arc, let's say for example, your villain wants to save the world by killing everybody. You know, killing all the humans. That's bad, but that's their hero- heroic arc, mm-hmm. and so. If they don't succeed, that doesn't mean that it's a bad arc. It's just that it's not their movie. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's, it's yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Just to kind of go back on your um, statement about indie films, like why are so many indie films, why do they have those like tropey kind of like unnamed sex worker yeah. characters? Just like vibes. Yeah. Like a woman is written and it's just, she's just a vibe. <laughs> she's not real. <laughs> She's window dressing, which is you know, just hot. You know what? Get a mannequin and put it in the corner because that's literally that's, 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 that's what, what she doesn't. Yeah. She barely has any lines. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I have a brain. So uh, this is only for me, and I, uh, 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 just to kind of set this up, I think in the indie film world, it just opens a lot more room for tropes. You know, like we are in some way maybe not as experienced as people from the studio system or that are you know, I want to say, taught in a in a in a in a university and a high level but i've I've seen tropes out of a Mm -hmm. university level script you know like ucla or usc Mm -hmm. and um i think my i've set rules for myself to try and avoid that and like for me i i don't think i'll ever write 
sex worker characters. You know, for me, I refuse to write the, the, the two rules that I have is I'll never write anything about rape or like, drug abuse or addiction. Oh, just because for me, well, I mean, you just close yourself off to like 99%. <laughs> right. Oh, film I'll never, I'll never write. Yeah. <laughs> And and for me, I think this is just for me, and maybe I, I I don't know. I feel like it's an easy thing to write into a script for conflict, um, addiction. Just those like really difficult, mm-hmm. like traumatic things. If you mm-hmm. write it into a character or into a moment without actually unpacking what it is, mm-hmm. you're just using it as like you know trauma porn fodder. Sure. You know. No, that's actually really yeah. interesting. I get what you're saying, and that's also interesting because like that. Um, <laughs> so Detroit, mm-hmm. the play that we talked about in the last episode, um, the the crux of it is, you know, beyond just this, but the character that I played and her husband, mm-hmm. they're they struggle, they they struggle with addiction. Mm-hmm. And um and they were just they're fresh out of a major substance abuse rehab and, and it goes into like other things and stuff. But the play, like for some reason, something about theater and like how dialogue it is and how just kind of like slice of life um this play is and stuff. It's like I feel like this character can get away with saying certain things that on a stage just hits in a different way. That when we adapted it to film, it, it actually kind of seemed like I don't know if like yeah. you would write that same like I don't know if that conflict is presenting the same way in film. Maybe and I don't know if that film, line yeah. is hitting the same. I'm not sure. I I I guess, you know, I'm not saying that these things aren't stories that need to be told because they definitely do need to be told i might not be the best person to tell these stories not that i haven't had experiences unfortunately with these things but like i just maybe it's the escapist in me i choose not to sure you know, because i want to tell stories where people escape in a good way maybe i don't know yeah but it's made me have to, it, those limitations have have forced me to be more creative creativity loves yeah. constraint and so i think the the moral of the story is you put constraints on yourself because it forces you to be creative and stop doing tropes. Sure. Name your characters, no matter just what they name are. Name your women. Yeah. Name women. <laughs> Please <laughs> give them names. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, uh, I think we have to wrap up, but uh, I'm, I'm excited that you're getting into writing because I think it's also informative Thanks. of, uh, it's, it informs other things that you do in the craft. Yeah. yeah. I think um, it'll yeah. make you a better actor, a better producer, a better editor. Ooh. Uh, I, I remember someone once saying a, a story or a film is edited three times. Once when you write the script, once when you're you know shooting it, and once in the editing room. I've heard which, that as well. Yeah, which is a good uh, segue into our next episode, which we talk about editing, mm-hmm. which I think will be fun because you just edited your first. I did. Yeah, f- short. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I want to hear more about that. Anyways, thank you for for coming on for another episode of the Anywood Podcast. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Thank you for joining us at the CFA studio for another series of the Anywood podcast. You can find the podcast wherever you find your podcasts or on YouTube at the Cinematography for Actors YouTube channel. See you next week. From the CFA network, Cinematography for Actors is bridging the gap through education and community building. Find out about us and listen to our other podcast at cinematographyforactors.com. Cinematography for Actors Institute is a 501c3 nonprofit. For more information on fiscal sponsorship, donations, because we're tax exempt now, so it's a tax write-off, and upcoming education, you can email us at contact at cinematographyforactors.com. Thanks. (laughs) 